Now, lip biting is an interesting one. It could be anxiety, but it also could be there's a whole lot more that he's not saying. Like there was about five different areas where he wasn't telling the truth. He's picking his words the whole time through. And someone who is being truthful doesn't need to pick their words. They just say it as it is. I am Adrienne Carter, also known as the Face Whisperer, and I'm a body language expert based here in the UK. What do you look for when you're examining someone? I'm, I'm looking for changes in behaviour. You know, people always think body language experts are looking for deception. Actually, what I'm looking for is changes in behaviour. When someone deviates from what they normally do, that tells us there's something interesting going on. What happens when something is said, when either they say something or something is asked of them, how their behaviour changes. And we can tell then what's going on internally because it's often reflected externally. I swear by Almighty God. I swear by Almighty God. That the evidence I shall give. So I think the interesting bit in this first clip is, look at his hand, his left hand behind his back. Did you see that? How he's wiggling his fingers. Straight away that tells me there's a lot of nervous energy going on at that point. You know, we trust people more when we see their hands. And it's not that someone is lying or being deceptive when they, we don't see their hands, but it's an interesting thing to do because normally you'd put both hands behind your back or you'd have both hands in front, but one round the back. It's a bit like I'm holding back. I'm holding back. There's something you're not going to get the complete me. You're going to get what I show you is how I would interpret that. Did you treat individuals in Downing Street with offence and misogyny? Mr Cummings. Certainly not. It's a very disrespectful way to answer the question. He sent a message with his body language that, you know, this is very much, I'm bored, not interested, boring me now. And it's a, it's a behaviour when you're answering such a serious question and want to be taken seri seriously, it's really not the ideal behaviour to be putting out there. So it, it's almost as if he's throwing it back to the interviewer as if to say, I'm not even taking you seriously. Mr Cummings, was that aggressive and foul-mouthed and misogynistic approach the correct way to manage fellow professionals? Uh, I don't know what the Ferguson thing is referring to, but in, in, in terms of Helen uh, and the situation in the Cabinet Office, you need to understand that the Prime Minister had, uh, first of all, uh, tried to sack the Cabinet Secretary and then botched it, and, was in, and he was still there. Then he'd said to everyone that he wanted Helen to be removed as well and that he did lost confidence in Helen. So we see Dominic Cummings crossing his arms there. Now, as I said, when I started out, we're looking for changes in behaviour. So he goes to cross his arms. Now, it's a myth that crossing arms is a defensive behaviour always. It's not always a defensive behaviour. However, in this instance, I think there is some sort of self-soothing that's going on for him. You know, there's, there's nerve endings in our skin and our fingertips particularly, that when we are feeling under stress and pressure, we want to do something to self-soothe. And I do think there's an element of him closing himself off this, so protecting himself. The new cabinet secretary had said that he wanted to have the authority to change both the PPS and choose his deputy, i.e. Helen. The prime minister had then trolleyed back on this as well. So we were in this absolutely nightmare situation where the PM had destroyed, had made clear that he didn't have confidence in either of the two senior officials, had said to people he was going to remove them. Then he... Did you see that tongue-in-cheek slightly there? I mean, that is exactly what it says on the tin, tongue-in-cheek. There's a bit of like, I know I'm dropping you in it. I know this is going to cause trouble. You know, that, that, that tongue-in-cheek there is exactly what it says on the tin. Now, my language about, uh, about Helen is, uh, uh, the language is obviously appalling, uh, uh, and actually I got on well with Helen at a personal level, but a thousand times worse than my bad language is the underlying issue at stake that we had uh, a cabinet office system that had completely melted, and the prime minister had half begun the process of changing the, the senior management and then stopped. I think the fact he's uncrossed his arms tells us he's, he's more comfortable with what he's saying now. So this is probably the truth. This is probably now. When, we be, when our gestures become expansive, when we open ourselves up, this is more likely now to be the truth of what really went on.
Do you think you contributed to a lack of effectiveness on the part of ministers and of the Cabinet? No, I think I was reflecting a widespread view uh, amongst uh, competent people at the centre of power at the time about the calibre of, of a lot of senior people who were dealing with this crisis extremely badly. He biked his lip um, as he says that. Now, lip biting is an interesting one. It could be anxiety, but it also could be there's a whole lot more that he's not saying. When someone covers the lips or bites the lips, it's often because there's a whole lot more to be said. Slow down, please, Mr Cummings. I mean, he takes that rebuke very well, but he, he purses his lips slightly. That's a sign of anger. He's getting annoyed now. And then when we see him twisting the pen, another sign of annoyance. Are you suggesting that your views expressed in those revolting ways were shared by others? Well, the, 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 my appalling language is obviously my own but uh, my judgment of a lot of senior people was widespread. We've gone to this again, which is, you know, it's a little bit of a protective behaviour, but the higher the fingers go up the face, the more disapproving we are of something. So he's getting really irritated, we can see that. Those DA meetings were not meetings to try to figure out the truth about hard issues. They were meetings as part of the kind of performance and coordination and the, const and the constitutional function. And my concern was that even at this st late stage in the crisis, a lot of people in the cabinet office were still fixated on the kind of Potemkin, maintaining the Potemkin aspects rather than actually getting to the heart of things. And we couldn't get to the heart of things in that room because we literally couldn't take in the information and show it to the PM and have a proper discussion about it. I mean, he's leaning forward. So this bit interesting, we always lean towards things we like and it, I think, I know he's got his arm crossed, but I think that's just a comfortable way for him to sit in this. I think he's comfortable with this information. I think this is not causing him high stress. This is just, I'm comfortable on this topic and talking about this in this way. And we see him start to do that gesture again. So this is a really comfortable topic for him. And he feels on very safe ground. When did it become apparent that modelling may not have been necessary in order to drive home the point that with the number of deaths and hospital cases that were the inevitable result of the infection fatality rate and the hospitalisation rate, the healthcare system would be likely to be overwhelmed. So Mark and Ben Warner raised this with me from uh, a, a kind of week before this point. We see him with his fingers. This is a, um, an anxious part for him. He's feeling the stress of this. If you also look at the forehead, the lines across tell us that the muscles there that have been activated are again are related to anxiety. So this is causing him some worry and some concern, this topic. Why did you have to have your wife and child in the car to assist you to drive down the road? Well, obviously I didn't have to have them in the car. That day, the 12th of April, was it your wife's birthday? It was. Was it Easter Sunday? I think so. I mean, as I said before, when his hands are like this covering his lips, it's because there's loads more to be said about this that he's not saying. He's being very careful with his words and pretending to think about it. He knows it was his wife's birthday. So this is a topic that he feels very uncomfortable. Um, and I, I will watch the end of this clip shortly, but I don't know if you saw the original interview that he did around this time. I mean, that he gave so much away in the interview he did soon after this this happened i did some analysis on it and it was like there was about five different areas where he wasn't telling the truth and i don't often say that um because i'm quite i'm quite careful about saying about deception but on this topic in the original interview he didn't tell the truth what are your final thoughts about what you've seen about his behavior throughout his um evidence um, my thoughts on his behaviour. Um, I think it's really easy to see when he is comfortable on a topic. And I think it's really easy to see when he starts to get stressed on a topic. Um, the elements that I would be questioning him more of is when he starts to get those stress. Because oftentimes, particularly when he's doing this, there's a lot more to be said that he's not telling the full story. So I think he's an interesting one. I think he, he watches his words very carefully. He's picking his words the whole time through. 
And someone who is being truthful doesn't need to pick their words. They just say it as it is. 